We have quorum and are live and ready to proceed. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Chrisanne, and I apologize for the delay with some very bad timing on, on a computer issue. <laughs> but uh, with that, I call the meeting to order uh, and I'd like to pass it over to Chrisanne for the land acknowledgement. Thank you. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. All right, uh, thank you, Chrisanne. And I'd also now like to turn it over to Michael Atlas to briefly explain the role of the TTC insurance company. Thank you, thank you, Alex. I, I'm gonna just provide a, a brief, or a couple of minutes, just to provide a brief overview of the insurance company. Some of this may be repetitive for those of you who know, some of this may be new. Um, but TTC ICL was formed in about 1994, uh, and it received its license to operate in, in the same year. So historically, prior to 1994, uh, the TTC used what was called a fronting policy. So effectively an insurer, in that case it was Markel, issued the pink insurance slips, but that was about it. So you paid a premium just to issue the, the pink slips and the TTC did all the adjusting and the, and the uh, defense of all the claims. So all the payments came from TTC, but Markel effectively got paid just to issue a, a fronting policy. There started to be some questions about whether the insurer being Markel had to, in fact, keep reserves behind the scenes um, in terms of the TTC's uh, claims, which it historically hadn't done. That then led to the question that that was going to be a significant cost increase if the insurer actually had to set aside reserves for all the TTC claims. So the TTC looked at alternatives and through both government orders and, and regulatory licenses created the insurance company effectively to insure TTC vehicles. So it provides two policies currently, one for revenue vehicles and a separate policy for non-fair revenue. Um, one, of the agenda, one of the agenda items you'll see uh, starts to expand this and you will add city vehicles into the insurance company starting in about one month or so. So there'll be a, at least a third, if not fourth policy to cover uh, city vehicles as well. Um, the insurance company is indemnified by the TTC, so effectively all claims, adjudication, and payments are funded by the TTC, and it minimizes the risk back to the insurance company to be uh, pretty minimal. That'll continue with the city. The city will provide a separate indemnity agreement back to the insurance company to indemnify the insurance company for all the risks associated with any of the insurance um, for their vehicles. Uh, one other comment is, is this is really the first layer of insurance for TTC vehicles, so it's up to $5 million. TTC buys excess insurance above the $5 million mark, um, which is handled by kind of third party insurers. Uh, one of the key conditions of the license is that the TTC, or TTC ICL must maintain at least one month reserve or the equivalent of one month of claims, um, costs and expenses on hand as either cash or securities. So, or 350,000, whichever is greater. The, annual or the monthly claim amount is greater. Currently that sits at $2.6 million that is being uh, carried to cover that licensing condition. Our current uh, one month claims operating and expense is about one point, on average $1.6 million during COVID. It was about 2.1 pre-COVID. Um, and the 2.6 is meant to cover the fact there's contingency in that because if, if you spike, you just don't have to change it every month. So it's meant to kind of address the fact that it will never exceed 2.6. It was previously 3.2 in, in 2020, it was reduced to 2.6. We would expect that this amount will increase as we add the city vehicles, as it will also have to cover the city's uh, exposure, the one month exposure. So we expect to see this amount uh, going into the next year increase by, to cover the city's um, cost too. Uh, the, the last point I'm gonna make about TTC ICL is the majority shareholder of the insurance company is in fact the Coach Terminal Inc. It owns 978 of the 1000 shares. And so even uh, there's a report on the agenda for tr coach terminal with respect to the transfer of the uh, properties, even with the transfer of the properties, the coach terminal as a corporation will continue to exist. And it is, it is the underlying foundation for the insurance company. That's okay. the brief overview. I don't know brief. if there's any questions. Th Seeing thank you, Alex. Thank, thank you, Michael. Um, so we will resume our agenda and at the start, I should ask if there's any declarations of interest for this meeting. No, nope, seeing none. Uh, the first item of, of business is the approval of the minutes of the audit committee meeting held on 
June 17th, 2020. Can I have a motion to adopt the minutes? Uh, Commissioner Osborne? All, all in favor? I think that is approved. Um, the uh, first item on today's agenda is the KPMG um, audit findings report for 2020. This report expresses the external auditor's opinion on the financial statement for the company and no issues of concern have been identified. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to receive the item for information? Um, Commissioner Lalonde and uh, uh, Commissioner Jagdale, second. All in favor? I think that is approved. Okay. Um, the uh, second item on the agenda, the draft financial statements of the TTC Insurance Company Limited for the year ended December 31st, 2020. This report recommends that the audit committee receive the draft uh, 2020 um, TTC ICL financial statements and forward them to the special meeting of directors and to the city manager. Uh, if there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to approve uh, the recommendations? Commissioner Osborne, and, and, uh, second by Chair Robinson. Sorry, sorry, I, sir? sorry, what item are we on? The, um, we're on the, the uh, draft financial statement. So we're the, the audit committee meeting for the TTC insurance company, and we're on the draft financial statements for the TTC insurance company. Okay, sorry, I'm too early. Thank okay. you. All right, no problem. Hi, it's Chris Ann. Sorry, I'm just going to jump in quickly. Our members for um, insurance are actually Commissioners Lalonde and Bradford, so we'll be seeking motions from either of them for insurance. When we move into coach, all members are members of coach. So I'll make that last motion, Alex. All right, thank you. And, and Commissioner Bradford, okay. All, um, both in favor? All right, thank you. Um, the the last um, item on this agenda is the appointment of the external auditor. The report recommends that the audit committee appoint KPMG to perform the uh, the 2021 financial year end audit of the TTC insurance company and forward the report to the shareholders for approval. If there are, um, uh, Commissioner Lalonde, yeah, uh, you're moving that motion, all right? Um, all, all in favor? Approved. Okay. And so that concludes the business of the audit committee meeting. Uh, can I please have a motion to adjourn uh, this meeting? So moved. Okay. Mr. Milland, Mr. Bradford, thank you. Um, okay. So we'll move on to the next meeting the TTC Insurance Company Limited Special Meeting of Directors. Any declarations of interest? Uh, seeing none, we'll move into the uh, first item of business, which is the approval of the minutes. From the meeting held on June 17th, 2020. Can I have a motion to adopt the minutes? Commissioner Bradford, all in favor? Is that approved? Um, this, uh, the first item on the agenda is also the actuarial financial review. This report recommends that the board of directors receive the summary from the annual actuarial report and approve the expected future financial condition report. So if there are no questions, can I have a, a motion to appro approve the recommendations? Commissioner Lalonde? Uh, uh, all in favor? Put it approved. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is the draft financial statements for the TTC Insurance Company Limited for the year end 2020. So the report recommends that the board of directors approve uh, the 2020 uh, TTC financial statements and forward them to shareholders and to the city manager. And I should add that we've um, identified a required amendment to the report recommendations, which I'll, I'll read now. For December 31st, 2021, it is recommended that the board formally delegate authority to any two officers of the TTC ICL to approve the financial statements in advance of the regular board approval at the June 2022 AGM and only for the purpose of issuing the external audit opinion to meet the financial services regulatory authority annual property and ca casualty regulatory filing deadline of, the, of February 28, uh, 2022. Are there any uh, questions on, on that? 
Um, so can we have a motion to approve the recommendations as amended? So moved. Commissioner Lalonde and uh, Commissioner Bradford, thank you. All in favor? Approved. Um, so that concludes the business of, of the special meeting of directors. Can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Uh, Commissioner Bradford. So moved. Commissioner Lalonde, thank you. All in favor? And that concludes that meeting. So now we're on to the TTC Insurance Company meeting of shareholders. Um, are there any declarations of interest? Okay, seeing none. The first item of business is is approval of the minutes uh, held on uh, of the meeting held on June seventeenth, twenty twenty. Can I have a motion to adopt the minutes? Commissioner Bradford, Commissioner Lalonde. Favor, I think that is approved. And uh, moving on to today's agenda, the election of directors, chair, and vice chair. This report recommends that the shareholders elect Michael Atlas and Anthony Chiquera to replace vacated, vacated TTC staff seats in the TTC ICL directorship and the audit committee, and to reappoint Ron Lalonde as chair and appoint Alex Kassar as vice chair, all for one year terms. Uh, if there are no questions or speakers, can we have a, a motion to approve? Commissioner Bradford. All in, uh, Commissioner Jagdale, all in, uh, all in favor? Approved? Okay. Re uh, receipt of proxy. Um, this report recommends that the shareholders receive the proxy from the Toronto Coach Terminal to vote 970 common shares on its behalf at any shareholders meeting held during 2021. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay, Commissioner Lalonde. All in favor? I think that is approved. Um, the uh, item number three, receipt of the financial statements of TTC Insurance Company for the year ended December 31st. The support recommends that the shareholders receive the 2020 um, TDC ICL financial statements. If there are uh, no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to approve to receive the item for information? Commissioner Lalonde? All in favor? Is approved. Okay. And uh, appointment of external auditor. The report recommends that the shareholders appoint KPMG. KPMG for the provision of external audit services for the 2021 fiscal year. If there are no questions or speakers, can we please have a motion to approve the recommendation? So moved. Uh, Commissioner Lond. all in favor? Approved, okay. Appointment of actuary. Uh, this report recommends that the shareholders appoint Benny Chan of JS Chang and Partners as the appointed actuary for the 2021 fiscal year. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to approve the recommendation? Commissioner Bradford, all in favor, approved. Um, item number six, updated implementation of shared services. Um, as mentioned by Michael earlier, this report update, updates shareholders on the implementation of, of the shared services initiative, whereby TTC ICL will begin to provide coverage for the City of Toronto's automobile risks. The TTC ICL will be fully indemnified by the City of Toronto. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to receive the item for information? And Commissioner Bradford? All, all in favor? That is approved. And that concludes the business of the shareholders meeting. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Commissioner Bradford? All in favor? Is approved. Okay, the, now we're on to the TTC Insurance Company Conduct Review Committee. Um, as we start this meeting, are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none, um, uh, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes um, of the Conduct Review Committee meeting held on June 17, 2020. Can I have a motion to adopt the minutes? Commissioner Bradford, in favor? That is approved. Um, the related party transactions. Um, first item is the item on, on this agenda. This report identifies related party transactions with the TTC ICL 
that have occurred during 2020. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to receive the item for information? So moved. Commissioner Milan, Commissioner Bradford. Uh, all in favor? Take that as approved. So that concludes the business of the conduct review committee meeting. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Commissioner Bradford, all in favor? Approved. Um, we're now on to the TTC Insurance Company Limited Meeting of Directors. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from the meeting held on June 17, 2020. Can I have a motion to adopt the minutes? Commissioner uh, Bradford, all, all in favor? Approved. Okay. Um, allotment and issuance of shares to new directors. Uh, this item, this report recommends that the board of directors approve the allotment and issuance of five common shares to each of the newly elected directors. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to approve the recommendation? Commissioner Lalonde, all in favor? That is approved. Um, election of officers. This report recommends the election of the following officers of TTC ICL for a one year term. Michael Atlas as president and general counsel, Anthony Traquera as vice president, Mark Cosgrove as secretary, and Alex Kassar as treasurer. If there are no questions or speakers, can we please have a motion to approve the recommendation? Commissioner Lalonde and Commissioner Bradford, um, all in favor? I think that is approved. Um, this um, the TDC Insurance Company Limited Investment. This report identifies the amount of cash or securities available to TTC ICL for the payment of current liabilities. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a, a motion to receive that for information? Commissioner Bradford, all in favor, take that as approved. Item number four, uh, the 2021 budget and business plan forecast. This report recommends that the Board of Directors approve the 2021 budget and forecast for the TTC ICL. Are there any um, uh, questions or speakers? No, can we, uh, can we please have a motion to approve the recommendation? Uh, Commissioner Lalonde, all in favor? I take that as approved. Item number five is the update implementation on shared services. This report updates shareholders on the implementation of shared services initiative, whereby TTC ICL will begin to provide coverage for the city of Toronto's automobile risks. The TTC ICL will be fully indemnified by the city of Toronto. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to receive uh, the item for information? Uh, Commissioner Bradford, all in favor is approved. That concludes the business of the meeting of directors. Can I please have a motion to adjourn? Commissioner Bradford, all in favor, it is approved. So now we're gonna be moving on to the uh, Toronto coach terminal uh, meetings. Uh, and I'd like to call the meetings to order. And before we be, uh, begin discussion the reports before us today, I'd like to turn it over to Michael Atlas to explain the role of the Toronto coach terminal link. Uh, thank you, Alex, again. So, uh, historically, Toronto Coach Terminal was previously uh, known or created as uh, Great Coach Lines Limited. Uh, I believe it was created in the 1920s, and it originally operated both a regional bus terminal um, that's still in the downtown core, plus it, it operated various bus routes. Those bus routes were sold in 1990, and uh, but remained the owner of the uh, bus terminal properties. It changed its name at various stages to either Metropolitan Coach Terminal, Inc., and to its current name, which is uh, Toronto Coach Terminal Inc. Um, it's really only major asset is the properties downtown, um, being the two bus terminals that are also subject to a current report. Uh, and it also owns, as previously stated, it owns the majority shares in the insurance company. Um, so there's some questions about whether the entity will continue to survive. The entity is needed to survive because it's the foundation for the, currently the foundation for the insurance company. Any questions on the history of Coach Terminal? Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Um, so now we resume our agenda. Are there any declarations of interest? Okay. Seeing seeing none, 
I will move on to the approval of the minutes uh, for the uh, TT, uh, for the post terminal audit committee meeting held on June 17, 2020. Can I please have a motion to adopt the minutes? Commissioner Lalonde and uh, Commissioner Jack Dale, thank you. All in favor? So that approved. Um, item number one on the agenda is a draft consolidated financial statements for the Toronto Coach Terminal Inc. for the year ended December 31st, 2020. This report recommends that the audit committee approve the draft consolidated financial statements of TCTI for 2020 and forward them to the board of directors and to the city manager. If there are no questions or speakers, can we please have a, a motion to approve the recommendations? Commissioner Lalonde and Commissioner Bradford. Thank you. Um, so that concludes the, the business of the audit committee. Can I please have a motion to adjourn? Commissioner Lalonde and all in favor? I think that is approved. Okay, uh, moving on to the Toronto Coach Terminal Inc. special meeting of directors. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none, um, the first item of business is approval of the minutes of the meeting held on June 17, 2020. Can I please have a motion to adopt the minutes? Uh, uh, Commissioner Lalonde, Commissioner Bradford, all in favor, I think that is approved. The uh, item number one is the draft consolidated financial statements of the Toronto Coast Terminal Inc. for the year ended December 31, 2020. Uh, this report recommends the Board of Directors approve the draft consolidated financial statements of TCTI for 2020 and forward them to the shareholders and to the city manager. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a, a, a motion to approve the recommendations? Uh, Commissioner Bradford, Commissioner Lalonde, um, all in favor? I think that is approved. So this concludes the business of the special meeting of directors. Can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Commissioner Jack Dale, Commissioner Bradford, all in favor? I think that is approved. So now we're on to the Toronto Coach Terminal meeting of shareholders. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none, the first item of business is the approval of the minutes held on February 10, 2021. Can I have a motion to adopt the minutes? Uh, Commissioner Lalonde, Commissioner uh, Jack Dale, all in favor? I think that is approved. Election of uh, item number one is the election of directors. This report recommends that the shareholders elect 10 TTC commissioners as directors of the Toronto Coach Terminal Inc. If there are no uh, questions or speakers, can we have a motion to approve the recommendation? Commissioner Long, Commissioner Jack Dale, all in favor? I think that is approved. Item number two is the consolidated financial statements of Toronto Coast Terminal for the year ended December 31st, 2020. This report recommends that the shareholders receive the TCTI consolidated financial statements for 2020. If there are no questions or speakers, can we please have a motion to receive the item for information? Commissioner Bradford, um, all in favor? I take that as approved. Exemption, item number three is the exemption from audit requirements. This report recommends that the shareholders consent, consent to exempt TCTI from an external financial audit for 2021. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to approve the recommendation? Commissioner De Laurentiis and Commissioner Lalonde, all in favor, is approved. This concludes the business of the shareholders meeting. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Commissioner Bradford, Commissioner Laurentis, all in favor? I think that is as approved. Okay, um, the next meeting is the, the Toronto Coast Journal Inc. meeting of directors. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none, the first item of business is approval of the minutes held on February 10, 2021. Can I please have a motion to uh, adopt the minutes? Uh, Commissioner Lalonde, Commissioner Bradford, all in favor, I think that is approved. Item number one is the appointment of the Vice President General Counsel. This report recommends that the Board of Directors appoint Dulce Mitchell, Solicitor of the TTC, to the position of Vice President and General Counsel. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to approve the recommendation? Uh, Commissioner De Laurentiis and Commissioner Jack Dale, all, all in favor, I think that is approved. Item number two is the GACTO lease expiry and proposed transfer of 610 Bay Street and 130 Elizabeth Street. 
The report recommends that the Board of Directors transfer operational management of the Greyhound and Coach, Coach Canada Toronto Operations Limited GACTO properties located at 610 Bay Street and 130 Elizabeth Street to the City of Toronto upon expiry of the lease, including addressing all financial, environmental, and maintenance obligations. Are there any uh, questions or speakers? Uh, Chair Robinson? Yes, I don't know a lot about this, so I just wanted to ask, when did we start transferring our lands to the City of Toronto? I know another example is Canada Square at Young and Eglinton, which we're looking at as Midtown councillors right now, but when, when did this, um, when did this, these transfers commence? Has this always been a, has this always been a, a practice of the TTC to transfer its lands to the city? Um, hi, Alex, I'll uh, speak to this. Yeah. It's uh, Pam Kraft, the head of uh, property planning and development at the TTC. Um, whenever property is not required for TTC purposes, um, we have uh, transferred them uh, to the city. Um, when the change made was made in 2018, we don't need to de uh, deem it surplus. Um, in this situation, uh, we are proposing to enter into an agreement to ensure that all of TTC's concerns um, have been addressed. So um, this has been happening since for 100 years? Uh, as of uh, 2009, uh, when we transfer it, we don't get any uh, financial benefit from the land that we're transferring. Um, but yes, when a, a land has been uh, surplus uh, to our needs, we do, uh, we do transfer it to the city. Since the beginning, but since 2009, there's no benefit associated with that transfer. Correct. Okay, that's helpful. I'm not sure if we all understand that. I certainly didn't. Um, there is there is a reference to 4.2 million in here. What's that related to? Um. So uh, actually, Alex, uh, may can, be able to. Yeah, I can answer that question. Yeah. So, um, uh, so basically, what what's happened is uh, the Toronto Coach Terminal, um, going back to um, original to go back in history had a um, the great coach lines and there was a final dividend that was paid when when that operation was wound up but it actually didn't have the fu the funds on hand to fully uh, pay those amounts to the TTC which was his owner so a loan was established um, and that loan had originally was thir about 13 million dollars and was paid down over time um, there is a balance that remains and then we're also looking at any of the remaining, um, you know, cash on hand and and, and liabilities, and also the ongoing uh, obligation to have um, that advance to the, T to the TTC insurance company. It's required as part of our insurance li license to have one month's operating expenses, and so all in. Um, it's looking basically, there's the need to have that 4.2 million dollars to meet all those obligations. Primarily, it's the remaining loan balance. Okay, I, yeah. I understand that. That's good, and. Um... So what does, uh, this is maybe a, an unfair question, but what would the market value of that land be? It's kind of um, couched in the core of downtown Toronto. Do you have any sense what the value of that, that land would be today in today's prices? Um, Ryan Glenn of the uh, Create TO is, uh, has joined the meeting. And uh, Ryan, are you able to um, answer the question on the approximate value of the property. Uh, I, uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm Ryan from uh, Wrangler from Creatio. Um, uh, I can't give you the, the exact appraised uh, amount, but what I can tell you is it's a very, very significant amount of money. So, um, uh, Commissioner, to your question, uh, the location of the property and the size of the property, the, these properties are identified as being um, significant assets of the City of Toronto um, and have been identified um, to go toward um, the uh, the office modernization, the modern TO program approved by Toronto City Council to help fund that program. Sorry, the, the which program? Can you just repeat that? Sure, I'd be happy to. It's uh, it's modern TO, so it's the um, the City of Toronto's owned office uh, modernization. Okay, and um, so how do how do we square this when the TTC has uh, significant financial needs and we have to buy trains in the next couple of years? How do we, how, you know, what, who made the decision in 2009 that the lands would transfer without any financial um, compensation? And was it, was it the TTC board or was it city council and, 
And how do we square this when we have such mammoth needs from an infrastructure, state of good repair, expansion, all those things? How do we deal with this? Um, it, it works kind of both ways. So for instance, um, 388 Evans was identified in the last several years as being surplus to another entity. And uh, we obtained operational uh, control of that. So that's uh, expanded the one of our existing garages. So at no cost to the TTC. So we benefited from that at no cost. Um, likewise, the um, CreateTO is helping us find a, a new and better location for uh, revenue protection and uh, transit enforcement. And um, we're also working with them to expand our Wilson Yard, taking over some existing city property. So it's a, a, a bit of a, a, a what we don't need uh, can have a better use to another group. And what we need, um, they help us find and transition for uh, TTC highest and best uses. Okay. And so, Ryan, are you going to buy us a new headquarters for the TTC from Creatio? Uh, he took off. I, I, oh, I, I, I'm, Hi, certainly, I'm certainly aware <laughs> the, the, of your needs, and we are going to work to, uh, to find you uh, an opportunity to locate a new headquarters. Um, so, yes, to answer your question, that's, that's one, of the, um, uh, one of the needs that we're aware of for the TTC, amongst others. Um, and uh, I, I thought it would also be helpful to note, um, just for everyone here, uh, that this is um, the same approach we take for all divisions, agencies, and corporations of the City of Toronto. So it's not exclusive to the TTC. Um, this is the approach taken across um, our entire um, uh, city portfolio. Yes, but um, and that and I'm well aware of that. Except that um, I don't think there's another organization. And I'll po pose it as a question to you: Are you aware of another organization with the uh, needs, financial needs uh, of the TTC, where we're trying to purchase not just streetcars but uh, trains in the next little while. Trains are not inexpensive, and so are you aware of another agency within the mix that has these kind of financial needs? Like, if you look at our long-term and short-term um, requirements, are you aware of another organization with, with the level of requirements that we have? Uh, what, what, what I would say is that, um, to answer your question, I'm aware of the significant needs for the TTC even prior to COVID, and I'm aware of the acute uh, nature of COVID on the TTC. So um, I don't have the entire uh, financial picture for all divisions, agencies, and corps in front of me, but I can appreciate that if, if they're not, if the, the need for the TTC isn't the highest, it would be well up there. So um, to answer your question, yes, I'm, I'm very well aware, and Pam and I talk about this need uh, on a very regular basis. Yeah, and I would just end by saying, are you have you been to the TCC headquarters any time recently? Well, pre-COVID and seen what's happening there that they're just jammed in and we can't accommodate staff there. Are you aware? I, of I have, yes. Yes, I have been to a number of meetings uh, with staff, yes. Great. Okay, so you heard it here. Ryan's getting us a new TTC headquarters. Thanks, Ryan. And uh, it's right. just anything. Anything Creatio can do to help. Yeah, and it's Josie here. If I just may add for uh, the committees that uh, we're working on a real estate investment uh, strategy and plan where we're laying out all our real estate needs over the next 15 years and we'll be sharing it with Creatio and the city. So we are very clear about all the kind of real estate properties that are associated with a lot of our capital works uh, so that they will have a I mean, our our uh, road you know our uh, road plan uh, for the future so that'll be really critical I think they're you know looking forward to getting that information from us but uh, yeah it's um, you know a lot of this uh, these changes happened back in 2009 when actually uh, build uh, was set in place and all assets were deemed to be those of the city and all surplus ones went to the city for best and highest use and then with the citywide real estate um, uh, strategy that council approved. Uh, the business case for Modern TO was set and this particular site was part of that business case. Thanks, Josie, that was helpful. Okay, all right, thank you. Are there any other questions on the item? Seeing none, are there any speakers? 
Okay, seeing none, can we, ha uh, with that, can we have a motion to approve the report's recommendations? Commissioner Bradford, Commissioner Jagdale, all in favor? I think that is approved. Um, moving on to item number three, the financial report for the Toronto Coal Terminal Inc. for the for the accounting period ending April 30, 2021. This report provides information on the non-consolidated financial results of TCTI as of April 30, 2021. If there are no questions or speakers, can we please have a motion to receive that information? Uh, Commissioner Bradford, all in favor, I think that is approved. And election of the audit committee members and committee chair. This report recommends that the board, the board elect a minimum of three members to the TCT audit, audit committee and the newly appointed audit committee elect a chair from amongst its members. So I will now call for nominations to the audit committee. Any nominations? Commissioner Jagdale? Can I nominate myself? Sure. I believe so. <laughs> okay. We're happy I can you're doing so. I can nominate him. I'd be, I'd be thrilled to nominate him. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, um, are there other nominations? We need uh, three members. I nominate Commissioner Lalonde. Commissioner Lalonde. And I nominate uh, Joanne to uh, join me. Okay, and Commissioner De Laurentiis. Okay. Okay, um, are there any other nominations? Okay, this is the final call for nominations. Okay. If there are no questions or speakers, can we have a motion to elect the nominated members to the audit to the audit committee? Commissioner Bradford and Commissioner Dorantis, all in favor? That is approved. I will now request that the audit committee members appoint a chair of the audit of the TCT audit committee. I nominate I Commissioner Lalonde. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Lalonde is. Um, <laughs> well, he's the most financially literate of us all, so it's only uh, it's only right. Seconded. <laughs> Looks like we have a majority of the audit committee. Okay, so um, we'll take that as the Commissioner uh, Lalonde is the chair of the TCT Audit Committee, and that would conclude the business of the meeting of directors. Uh, can I have a meeting a motion to adjourn? Uh, Commissioner Jack Dale, Commissioner Laurentis. All in favor, take that as approved. And that concludes the uh, insurance company and the coach terminal meetings. Uh, for, uh, so thank you very much, everybody. And thank you again for the uh, patience at the beginning, given the technical issues.